Hey. Welcome to episode two of the Arucast. Hallelujah. You betcha. And as you can see, we have switched seats because this guy is Me. the man of the hour now. Oh, yeah. boy. Are you ready for your introduction? I hope it's better than the rest of the episode, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we're going to talk about the man of the hour. So it starts this the same way as, as mm. you know. He's the guy who can't wait to bring it, which is fine as long as he doesn't sing it. When he isn't talking about cars, it's guitars. He ain't rushing to get the puss, but two years ago he ate some Russian tush. He's a good asset to the human race, despite the fact that he says, You forgot? We planned this, dude. Uh. Okay, it's a, he's a good asset to the human race. Despite the fact that he says... Shut your face! <laughs> well, that could have gone better. He's the no. most likely to be able to read a schematic. He's the pragmatic asthmatic. Ulvar Alexander Ulvarsson! I am flattered. Yeah, he kind of let me down, but <laughs> otherwise it was good. Shut your fucking face. <laughs> yeah, that was what, what you were supposed to say. <laughs> I like the schematic reading, pragmatic, asthmatic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about dramatic, but no, you're not really that dramatic. Oh, no, no. Uh, I was thinking about I'm, I'm, I'm empathetic, but it doesn't really, it's, it doesn't really uh, no, flow I'm, as well. I'm not really empathetic. And also, you know, you're not really that yeah. empathetic. It's true. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to get to know you a little bit better. Oh and boy! I I didn't really think about like making any new questions, so there's just going to be basically the same questions that you got. Let's just start off by going back to your past. Oh no! Now I want to go even further than than him. I want to ask: Do you know which song was playing when your parents were fucking and making you? <laughs> Probably some Christmas song, is it? <laughs> My dad told me the story that he was pissed drunk, <laughs> my mom was sober, they were both 19, and it was New Year's. So okay. probably some Christmas song. <laughs> Definitely not Old Lang Syne, though. No, no, no. Definitely not, not our Thal version of oh, Old no, Lang Syne. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> like, Thal hadn't been invented yet. Okay, so let's go uh, a little bit further into the future. A little bit, yeah. And uh, ask you, like, what kind of music was usually played in your households? Uh, what did your parents listen to? I don't really know the musical tastes of my mom, but it, probably because I never asked and didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> what about your dad? Uh, my stepdad is an old like thrash metal guy. Oh. Had a, had a lot of Metallica, Slayer, Merciful Fate, and stuff like that. He really liked it. Don't forget Maiden. <laughs> 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 is there anyone else in your family like that stood out like that you found in, like had interesting music tastes or played yeah. music or anything? Not really. I was always the oddball out. Yeah, you were up north there where there's like no musical talent or. <laughs> well, there were some guys that listened to metal and even fewer that played guitar, or like at at the level that I hope to achieve. But yeah. So like for people that don't know, he's from Sikluvirder. Yeah, it's a tiny little town up north. It's technically the northernmost town of Iceland, at least if you draw a line from the middle, like the dead center of Iceland, and just draw right up. It's just slightly to the left pretty of, far of the line. Yeah, pretty far north. Yeah, it's about 400 kilometers or, I don't know, 600 bananas, I don't know. <laughs> But I guess six hundred bananas. <laughs> yeah, for the U.S. folk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because we know the imperial system is based on bananas, right? <laughs> well, it it is based bananas. on it's based off grain. But <laughs> yeah. it's let's just say let's just say it's it is bananas. And, yeah, and, and just but I, 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 I it's probably about two hundred and forty miles. <laughs> the for funny it. thing is, like, I recently checked, and our demographic is mostly Americans. So we're just like <laughs> saying, like, your imperial system sucks. Well, it does. <laughs> Metric sorry, is the way to go. I'm yeah. just so sorry. Get with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, w while we're doing that, Britain, drive on the right side of the road, man. And Australia, of course. And Australia, too. And Japan. And, and, and a lot of other countries. And South Africa. <laughs> and so, uh, let's, let's not comment on South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> when did your interest in music pop up? When did you think like you would want to start playing? Or yeah, my, my music interest started when I was about 10, I'd say. Or probably even sooner. And what, like, turned on that part of your brain? My dad gave me, like, a little mix CD 
when the only song I remember from it is Spitfire from uh, was it Pandemic? I don't remember the band. That song. That, I'm not even sure what that is. Is it a classic? Blood, yeah, that Blood Sugar. Forgetting? Don't you know Blood Sugar? I don't think I do. Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll put uh, up a little clip of it. Yeah, I'll show you later. <laughs> yeah. And then when I was about what, 12, I'd gotten into like heavy metal and stuff. And my dad said, like, just go like learn to play guitar in music school. I'll pay for it for you. Because he knew that would be the only way to get you laid, right? Yeah, because <laughs> that was a little shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, you needed to learn some instrument, and guitar was the... Oh, yeah, I, I needed that, because uh, I have ADD, and I probably was depressed at that time, but it hadn't, like, fully formed until, like, ninth or eighth grade. It had, hadn't reached its, like, primal form, I guess. It hadn't reached the point where I threatened everybody in my class that I'd kill myself. Oof. Oof. So, We're starting off dark. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> We're all depressed in this room, by the way. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be a doozy. We've guys. all suffered from depression and anxiety and stuff. I still do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm actually in a good place right now, though. Yeah, I'm feeling fine as is. Yeah. So uh, at what age did you get your first guitar, then? It, I got my... My first guitar at 14, but my aunt let me borrow her Encore Strat copy. Mm. And uh, I think it was a 10-watt custom with a K practice amp. <laughs> custom with a K. Oh, it's like nice. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> custom with a K. With a K. <laughs> yeah. Which sounded like shit. And <laughs> but but I mean, it was better than nothing. And yeah, also it sounds that, better than most practice, practice amps. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. Compared to the one we had in the practice space in Up Yep. which we the smashed. Bro. Also, when you're starting out, you sound, you sound bad anyways because you don't know how to use it. So you might as well yeah. have a bad like amp and guitar and everything. Yeah. Yeah. If I remember correctly, it's at the EQ, like no bass, just middle and treble. Oh, oh no. dude, I hate that. <laughs> like, no I, I, bass. I still have the amp at home. I can bring it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> at least like take a picture of it when you get home and send me so i can put it up here that we can just find some yeah some well, picture on it on. might be might be cooler if it's the actual thing you know? ah you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll take a selfie with it and maybe you can try to sell it on ebay <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but then uh with our confirmation mm. which we all know nobody in iceland does that because of religion no we do it because we know everybody gets a lot of gifts and a lot of money yeah <laughs> <laughs> and at I least, got a lot of gifts and at, a lot of money. At least the most money that a kid gets, like, that, that's the most amount of money you would have gotten up to that point. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> at, at once, definitely. Yeah. Like, I got about, what was it, 220,000 krona. Yeah. Which today would be about 1,700 bucks, 1,800 bucks, I think. And I got a Fender Frontman 212R amplifier mm. and uh, an ESP LTD EC50 the coolest shit ever an ESP like Les Paul I still love that guitar but it's a six string so I don't really play it anymore <laughs> yeah we kind of destroyed six strings for us yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like after going to Italy with almost City Burns and we yeah I bought a new six string then with my tax return oh yeah Used it for three gigs, and then we both decided, like, it's too much of a hassle to change guitars every two songs. Yeah. Then we just, yeah, both using drop pedals and just everything on the seven string. Okay, so before you started to move south, yeah, was there some some uh, musical, like, experience, some musical story you have, which is interesting, like, because you know, when we get, go south, we start talking about the bands you've been in and everything. Uh, uh, I might have a, a funny tale. Okay. Just my Actually, two. No, 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 the first one's not interesting. I mean, were you in any, any bands up north? or? <sighs> well, technically I was in two bands, but they were both like school bands. Oh, okay. The first one was from the music school because there's like a... Fjolaga Hotel, like National Anthem Festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I played bass there, and I was the only one that didn't look at the note sheet. <laughs> or the conductor. Because... We don't in our kind of music. No, it's true. I, I just know the song. I'm listening. Yeah, just I don't it. need to look at you <laughs> to know what's going on. Yeah, uh, yeah we, I played two concerts, one in Akureyri and one in Reykjavik. Yeah. Both fun, but a lot of like classical learned artists, which are, you know, pompous. Not your kind of stuff. Nah. No. I mean, apart from 
you know, we're mostly talking about music here, of course, but we also have heard a lot of stories about just life in Sigluferdur oh, when yeah. you were younger. Yeah. A uh, bunch of traumatic stuff. And let's not go into that right now. It might be too dark maybe, for me. Maybe not in yet. detail. Yeah. So let's just let's just oh, yeah. jump right. Well, then when I went to, what would you call it, high school, like post oh, yeah. tenth the other grade. Story. Yeah. Yeah. Post tenth grade, we went to Music Tilrener, which is like just a battle of the bands for like, musical experiments in English. Yeah, but it, it is a battle of the bands. Yeah. Pretty I much. competed uh, <clears throat> on the same night as Kalo. Oh really? Yeah. That. They were the first ones on stage. <laughs> that really demoralized us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, they obviously won. Yeah. But we we went under the the awesome moniker of Turtle Taco Experience. The Turtle Taco? Not, not with not, the... Not, not the... Just no, oh, just Turtle, turtle Taco turtle Experience. Turtle Taco Experience. <laughs> we can probably find some photos from musical oh, experiments <laughs> on, the, on the website. So that's like the most... Like the most that you did up north than when it came to music. Uh, yeah. And I was mostly just playing in my room. And, and then my uncle committed suicide. And then I could write stuff. Like I said, dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that kind of reflects your how your interest in like different genres developed when you were younger, right? Did you go like darker uh, and darker and heavier and heavier? Or yeah, did- pretty much. I mean, I went from like pretty much only listening to Metallica to listening to Six Feet Under, which is a death metal band. Mm. Uh, the death metal band that was formed by the original vocalist from Cannibal Corpse. Okay. And then I befriended Jeff Hewell, the current bassist with a seven-string bass on Facebook. And and so so he accepted your friend request. Yeah, and I like asked him two questions. He answered them, and that's it. <laughs> you haven't <laughs> talked since. No, no. You, so you're not like best mates now. No, no, no. A beautiful it, it, friendship. <laughs> yeah, it, so, yeah. We're just friends on Facebook. And probably right. doesn't even remember me, but. <laughs> well, what was like in those days? What was your like favorite band just overall? The, Would you say Cannibal Corpse or no? I I never got really really into them. I liked one album, and then I discovered Suicide Silence and Lamb of God, mm. and Lamb of God has has been one of my favorite uh, bands since. You, would you say that maybe like your all time favorite band or uh, no? What would you say was your all time favorite? Anything Keith Merrow does. Anything Keith Merrow. Just yeah. just, just Keith Merrow. Let's yeah. just say that. Yeah, it, it, it kind of shows in your choice of guitars. Yeah. <laughs> and the pickups I bought from my eight string. Yeah. <laughs> so if you if Keith Merrow would be uh, watching this, what would you say to him? You are my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You are are you per- tired? <laughs> are we boring you? No, it's just it's been a long day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's go. Uh, to Reykjavik. Yes. Where we currently are almost. So what was the reason why you moved south? Was it just mainly music or was there some other reason? Uh, so from an early age, I wanted to move to Reykjavik. Because in 2006, when I was about 10, when I was exactly 10, <laughs> <laughs> my grandma and dad moved to Reykjavik. Oh, yeah, by the way, my dad and my mom, they split up when I was about two. When I, A child of divorce, lady and, ladies and gentlemen. No, not divorced. They were just engaged. Oh, they were just engaged? Yeah. Oh, they never got married. No. So you're a bastard. Yeah, I am a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I am a legitimate bastard. Yeah. <laughs> you're illegitimate <laughs> bastard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I, I There's wanted... no stigma behind that. So no, that no not, at least not here. You know. <laughs> Who the fuck cares? <laughs> yes. But, yeah, I wanted to move for quite some time because my dad was always like my best friend. He always supported me in anything I did. But he was never afraid to give me a stern talking to when threats of hanging me by my balls <laughs> if I did something wrong. <laughs> okay. Interesting Oof. choice of organ. <laughs> it, it was just a warning. Just, just don't do that. <laughs> Oh yeah, so uh, you. Oh then... yeah, uh, yeah. Before that, I I, yeah. I always planned to move to Reykjavik when I was eighteen. Okay, but my mom said that you have nothing to do with that. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> At sixteen, that that's when that came in. Then I met a girl. We dated for a while. Then it turned out that her father is was my boss at the time, <laughs> and her mom was my like uh, main teacher. <laughs> Yeah, Iceland, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a description <laughs> of a little town in Iceland. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was also, what would you call it? Tossi? 
Tosi, yeah, it would be like... Uh, the shittiest student in the school. Yeah, it's the opposite of being a dork in school. It would be yeah. like... <laughs> I was that. Yeah. <laughs> while I was staying under the roof of my teacher mm. <laughs> and my boss. Have you done your homework? <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we broke up and due to weird circumstances, I got really depressed and kind of malnourished because of it. Because, like... You just it, didn't eat... At yeah, all. but there was a reason behind that. Okay. That that didn't help with the depression that came after. Because I had to go to work like at one o'clock, but I had woken up at eight and I hadn't eaten anything. And we were working outside of the town fixing, uh, cleaning up after some incident. And I couldn't go home until about eight, which means I hadn't eaten anything in over 24 hours. Oof. Oof. And then like the day after we broke up and... In my depression, I usually just don't eat. <laughs> and being, that doesn't help, yeah, being, by the way. <laughs> it, starving on top of that, it, it really didn't help. Yeah. And then I said to my mom, I'm moving south. And she said, fine. Needed a new start. Yeah. So it's, a, it's good for you to change your environment. Okay. And then I called my dad like, yeah, I'm moving south. Cool. I'll make a boat for you. And you moved in, yeah. Moved in with your dad. Yeah. That that's kind of your musical awakening in a in a way because you then you met these guys. I I met them long before. Long before. Okay. So yeah, when did you I, meet? I, I meet the guys? I, I met Goethe and okay. Jon Goethe, the mm. other blonde circumcised guitar player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can bleep that uh, one of those out. Ah, we're all circumcised. Yeah, now, yeah. Who cares? At least in this room. Yeah, I, I met them back in 2013, the same year musical experiments were. Mm. Because Walt Mercedes Burns had taken part in that too. Because Jon Goethe was fucking one of my childhood friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He was not the first to do that, and oh boy, was he not the last to do that. <laughs> 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 yeah, we got talking, and like, ah, oh, you're in a band, yeah, cool, eh? you did that, ah, eh? cool. And then I started, like, anytime I had a chance in Reykjavik, I'd go see them live. Yeah. And then in 2016, shortly before I moved, Goethe said to me, hey, why don't you just move and join the band? I kind of thought he was kidding. <laughs> okay. But I moved either way. <laughs> and then, it was just another reason for you to come here. Yeah, but yeah. then like a week later after I moved, I just bought a car, which was broken as shit, fixing it. Then Goethe called me like, hey, me and Glow are recording a new song. Wanna come by? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's the start of uh, you being in Wilma City Burns. Yeah. And then what? Half a year, or maybe, yeah, half a year later. You were you were, you the were talk, yeah. In... You were talking about that Fleming had quit, and yeah. you needed a bass player, and you were going to record a demo tomorrow, when we were all drunk. <laughs> and I said, "Hey, I can, <laughs> I try can play that. bass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can try doing that." Yeah. And that's that's when I spent like <laughs> half a day being hungover as shit, learning Ozzy <laughs> yeah. on bass. And then when I came here, like. I have no idea what I just practiced, but okay, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I mean, you did did do it well, so yeah, yeah. But I was impressed. And and the two subsequent times I recorded it, it just got better. <laughs> then Axel wasn't a fan that I just joined like spontaneously, and you didn't talk to him beforehand. Mm. And a couple of months later, he left, and I got promoted to guitar player. <laughs> I, I I would say though that I don't think that was the main reason why he left that band. Oh no 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 no! It's just something I noticed when every everything was happening. Yeah. I mean, I guess we didn't really talk to the other guys a lot about that he would be joining the band. We just thought like, hey, he knows how to play and we need a person. So mm. <laughs> so why not? Uh, it's been a blast since. Because yeah. when, I, when I moved to Reykjavik and joined Weil and joined Aru, I wasn't really that good at playing guitar. <laughs> Even, but you've learned a even lot. Even though I had been playing for about seven years. Yeah. Was that maybe just because of... The genres you were focusing on, or? No, oh, Lamb of God is tricky as fuck. Mm. I, I'd also been, like, learning Whitechapel riffs and stuff. And, but just the way Chloe writes sometimes <laughs> can be a little bit tricky. <laughs> <laughs> but, but then, but now you actually write sometimes uh, stuff that he goes like, <sighs> <"Ole."> <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially since this is going to be out after our tholo. Yeah. yeah, that ending part fucked me up, man. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. You also just hadn't practiced at all. I think that's yeah. the big part. But it, you, you would have been able to play it if you'd practiced it. So. Yeah, but, but yeah, I, I have I have Chloe to thank for 
becoming a better guitar player because usually when I try to learn difficult songs like certain periphery riffs and stuff, it's just fuck this, I give up. Yeah. But with like this is our music, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> And then I had to develop certain techniques, and yeah. now I just rip Chloe off when I write. <laughs> but it took me a long time to be able to write music. I didn't start until what? Did, wh when did you learn to use Guitar Pro? That would be 2014. So you did pick it up pretty quick then, I guess. I mean, Yeah, I, I could write, like, shitty songs. Yeah, but, not, but nothing compared to what we're doing now. Yeah, but after I moved, I didn't really write anything. I just couldn't think of a riff that would go with Wild or go with Aru. Uh, okay. uh, maybe Glower wrote a riff like, hey, how about we do this instead of this? And sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. And then Tholly Thursday started. <laughs> yeah. And then we had yeah. to write all the time. I did, like, Glow did two of the first episodes alone. And I, <laughs> like, hey, guys, can I be with? I'm like, yeah, sure. And we recorded like three in a row and came out like, I, I have to contribute. And that's how one of the upcoming songs was born. Oh, yeah. Just a funny little skit. I think it's Tholly Thursday number six. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, just wrote I it like, yeah, it's something stupid. It's something Tholly. Yeah. And we recorded like that minute. Went home. I'm like, I, I like this idea. This and I finished the song. And now it's a, a five and a half minute song <laughs> yeah the one of the things that i like about that we started Tholly thursday is, is that we didn't have to take it really seriously oh no, no no we were just like let's just make some fun riffs and and just shoot some funny videos and just throw it out there but you can notice that we were awfully stiff in the first couple of episodes yeah though we started getting a little bit more laid back about yeah. it because now we're used to being behind the camera yeah definitely you you guys uh you guys have uh, developed a kind of not a camera persona, you just have kind of gotten used to being yourselves in front of the camera now. Yeah, yeah, that took some practice. All right, let's go into your favorite genre. Deathcore. 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 Is there a... I do love Thal. Yeah. I really love Thal. But for me, just good Deathcore trumps all. When you think about it, Thal is pretty much just progressive Deathcore. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I wrote a song the other day. Which I noticed, like, yesterday, like, that's not a Thal song. That's just a straight-up Deathcore song. <laughs> Infinite. Yeah. It's not really Thal. <laughs> it's just a lot of chugs. <laughs> I mean, when you're, like, in this kind of niche part of the metal genre, it starts to blend together a little bit. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, we, we say we are, what, a Thal progressive metal band on Facebook, but we do a lot of shit. Yeah. Yeah, you might say we're like a blend of progressive metalcore with deathcore, thaw, and and and, 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 and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what's your least favorite genre? <laughs> hey, Currently, Hoppin. I'd say mumble rap. Mumble rap. <laughs> yeah. Is there a sp certain artist that you like can't stand? I, I cannot name a single mumble rap <laughs> artist. <laughs> because you just like, whenever it comes on, just, you don't even want to know who it is. Yeah, but I noticed something on the radio a couple of days ago, which I found fascinating. There was some mumble rap song, I don't know the name of it, it goes like, me, 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 me. <laughs> You've probably heard it somewhere on the radio. I don't listen to the I, I noticed they <laughs> censored that song. Yeah, like you could understand yeah, that. In, anyway. in the mumble part. <laughs> uh, they, they mumbled, uh, they censored fucking, just like removed it. Yeah. And like, yeah, I couldn't understand any words before. Or any words after, but that absence indicates a fucking. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, but, but the advert in the radio just after the song was "Pussy Wax, Pussy Wax, Pussy Wax." It was like, okay, pick That's a road. Okay. Yeah, pick a road and stick to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, like, like you can't understand the guy, yeah. but you understand what was there when the gap comes. You know, like, oh, he said fuck. Like, if you just not put the gap there, if we just kept the song going, no one would know. <laughs> it's like a Whitechapel's possession music video. It's yeah. censored in the end in God Damn You All. Yeah. Just God, you all. Like, <laughs> it's just like, you, you can barely hear what he's saying and you're still censoring it. Yeah. And it's not like it's going to be played like with the top 40 pop songs on the radio. <laughs> true then why bother yeah like also just bleeping out damn like yeah. really <laughs> like even it's if weird. it's goddamn like what kind of 
God-fearing country do you live in where you can't say God damn it? I mean, maybe he's not even saying like God damn, D-A-M-N. It could be a dam. A dam. Like yeah, a, uh, yeah, the hydroelectric dam. Yeah. <laughs> it's a godly dam we've yeah. made here. God damn. The, <laughs> fact that, the fact that you said mumble rap made me think of a, a line here. Hmm? Humble hippity hop, mumble hippity hoppity, get the fuck off my humble hippity property. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that line. That was that was a good one. That was a very good one. Okay. Shut hey! up. <laughs> We're trying to do a podcast here, man. Jesus. People shouting outside. Yeah. Can we get a hole, yeah? What's your overall like all time favorite album? That's a mean question. <laughs> It's been a you helped us write these questions. <laughs> yeah, but I'm pretty sure I had nothing to do with that question. <laughs> okay. Like, it's been a while since I stopped thinking you, about favorites. You could do it in, like, periods. Like, when you were younger, did you have a favorite album? Yeah, in my late teens, I'd say... Uh, uh, Ashes of the Wake by Lamb of God. Okay. Some good shit riffs. And today, there. like, uh, uh, if you... Take what you have gotten more into nowadays. Well, like my current favorite album would probably be Brown of Sacrifice, Lifeblood. You've been listening a lot to that. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially I, since I, I've i been reading Berserk for seven or eight years. Yeah, rest in peace that guy, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. Kento de Miura. Yeah, that's fucking sad. He fucking didn't God. manage to finish it. He, he, we're only 365 chapters into this since 1988. Like, that's not enough. <laughs> You've still been doing it a long time. But you still died young, 54. Yeah. Oh, really, really fucking young. Well, did, did they say what happened to him? Yeah, uh, something with uh, arteries in his heart. Oh, uh, was he eating shitty food? <laughs> no, it's just stressful being uh, um, a manga illustrator in Japan. Oh, okay. Is it a really stressful job? Yeah. If you take, like, the author for One Piece, mm. some people will know that. His schedule is pretty much just work 18 hours a day. Damn. And then two hours for, like, eating and shitting. That's so then, unhealthy, Then man. two hours of sleep, and then he gets back up. Oof, that's oof. just for maybe three or four days of the week. But still. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, that's crazy. But that guy has drawn and released 1,015 chapters since 97. <laughs> That puts in perspective why Berserk doesn't have enough. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I just realized that I'm a lazy fuck. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's our excuse? Uh, I guess that we want to live past 54. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess that would be a good excuse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so uh, do you have a metal pet peeve? Yeah, I do. I don't remember the song, but... Uh, like a specific song to point out but sometimes I'm, I'm listening to my, my daily mix on Spotify and you get some like oh, it's like death corey death metal -y groove going on and then the vocals are just unintelligible monotone burps <laughs> just, <laughs> wait a second, I fucking hate that, that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. What like did you that. say? I just said <laughs> because it's maybe that's why it's unintelligible. They just don't know what to say, so they just do that. Oh, it smells like Chicago Town. <laughs> it's a good that is Hits mic you're using. Huh, yeah, <laughs> my expensive secondhand mic. <laughs> yeah, and you're not. You don't even get to use it now because yeah. you're the guest. Yeah. Uh, but I'm gonna stay here. <laughs> do you have a guilty pleasure genre or an artist or something? <laughs> No, I just take pleasure. So it, what would, what would like, is there, okay, is there an artist that you don't think is a guilty pleasure because maybe you just don't have any guilt in your body? I have no guilt in the music I listen to, <laughs> but I realize that I, uh, well, you, what, 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 like, what would surprise I, someone that you listen to? Uh, for most people who know me, I really love the Tim Minchin album that came out last year. Yeah, Tim Minchin. Oh, I, I, I just learned of it. Last week. Yeah, because I told you about it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have listened to that album a lot. Yeah. Even though, like, there are, what, two or three songs that are, like, half comedy. Yeah, we're talking about the, the album Apart Together yeah. that he released, which yeah. is not 
really that com comedic at all. No, that, there, are, there are two, maybe three songs, yeah. which are like in the more comedic side of things. But uh, can he write like dramatic, emotional songs? I mean, he's just a really good artist. Yeah. Like an amazing piano player. Oh, yeah. Pianist, it's called. Pianist. Yeah, but I, I, I definitely agree with the fact that he would not be a guilty pleasure. He would no, just be I, a pleasure. I just, I just love him. Yeah, he would just be a pleasure, yeah. clearly. Okay, so what instrument would you play if you couldn't play guitar? Well, if it depends on why I couldn't. Okay, let's say... <laughs> Debilitating we, injury? No, let's, well, let's just say, like, you Mouth. had a, a metal god that you believed in, and he just came down from his metal heaven and said, you can't play guitar anymore, you have to play something else. Why would Keith Merrill say such things to me? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking metal heaven. Man, everything's gray here. <laughs> I mean, I would say drums, but I'm asthmatic. <laughs> so, you and, can still play and, drums. I would, I would always go to the more extreme side. I, I realize that with enough practice and with good enough technique, it doesn't strain your body that you much. You would just do gravity blasts all the time. No, I think I'd learn <laughs> proper blast beats. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would say gravity blast is kind of proper. If you do it correctly, it, it can sound real proper. Yeah, but I'm, I'm talking about with, uh, with like, the, the finger flicking. Yeah. And like... Uh, like uh, Alex Rudinger, you, you you can see how he does it. Yeah. Every time I try to do that, I get tired after like four or five strokes. <laughs> <laughs> four or five strokes. Yeah, oh, that, that made me think of something else. Uh, okay. I, uh, uh, I can last up to nine in that department. <laughs> well, time to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, now okay, now I'm wondering, do you remember the atomic number of Tholian? It's definitely 200 and something. It's heavy. I, th I, I put it up last last time. I what, don't remember what it was. Was it 217 or I, 200, I, I 218? I, I can't remember. I don't know why I didn't try to remember it. Might as well look it up. Next question. Yeah, so uh, what string gauges do you use? I mean, I guess we talked about that last time. Yeah, but I can repeat it yeah. if somebody doesn't want to listen to the other one. Because I am the superior man of the hour. Also, you're the guy that takes care of all that string gauges uh, and yeah. tuning and not, uh, not tuning, but sh we're switching out strings and everything. Oh, sorry, I was way off. It's number eighty-one. 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 Yes. Yeah, of course. Which puts it in the neighborhood of tungsten and lead. But yeah, string gauges. Yeah, uh, for seven string, I can never use like standard string gauges, which you can buy like for seven strings, mm. because fifty-nine or sixty-four is not thick enough for droppy. <laughs> It's strange coming from you, who uh, talks about his own penis in a certain way, that those strings aren't thick enough for you. <laughs> Just like my penis. <laughs> uh, yeah, but for, uh, for like the vicinity of drop E to drop F sharp, yeah. like a 12 to 60 with an 80 on top on a 26.5 inch scale length, or my KM7 Mark II, yeah. is perfect for me. I know Glower prefers like 11 to 56 with a 74 on top. It's a bit lighter, but can't handle like the lower ones as good. But it's better for like drop F sharp. Yeah. Uh, even decent for drop it G. sounds more crisp with that tuning. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise it's just too high strung, like yeah. too tense for higher tunings. Just um, like us when we're on our anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and then eight string. Yeah, right? eight string. Uh, I decided to pretty much stick to the gauge which came with my guitar, but I changed it up a little bit. It came with uh, 9 to 46 plus 64 plus 80, but I changed it to 10 to 46 plus 64 plus 80, even though it's a 28 inch scale. <laughs> I just like that a, a little bit more tension on the higher strings. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go to favorite tuning now. Uh, for seven string drop F, I just always fall back to drop F. Drop B is cool. Drop F sharp is fine. I, if I remember correctly, you said that too, right? So you guys agree with that? Yeah. It's the best tuning? It's like, if I'm going to write seven string, it's the go-to. Yeah. Or like, besides when you think like, ah, oh, this would probably sound cool in drop E, then you do it in drop E. But if it's just, oh, I have a riff idea, drop F. And for eight string, I'd say drop D sharp. Like the the second newest, uh, Folly Thursday mm. in the woods. The one in the woods, yeah. Yeah, that's drop D sharp. 
That sounds good. Yeah, I tried putting Guitar Pro down to drop D for that song. It just sounded off. Mm. So sometimes lower isn't better. But also, you know, Guitar Pro doesn't really sound that great. Yeah, but... <laughs> Yeah, but we see through that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've yeah. learned to translate it. Yeah. But yeah, drop D sharp for me was definitely the texture for that song. Yeah. But then our upcoming special, which will hopefully be a full length song with vocals and stuff. Yeah. That, that, that's the, because of just how that, the... That's probably not going to happen anytime soon since we're going to do all no, that. No, no, no. It's probably be but, in a couple of weeks But yeah, least. I'm really excited to work on that. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> Shall we give them a spoiler about... Uh, no, 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 oh, no. Okay. We'll, just, we'll just say it's that... It's from a video game. That's we'll, it. Yeah, we'll just say that this guy isn't that interested in it because he hasn't played that. No, I don't know anything about it. And if you take us together, we have many, many, many hundreds of hours logged in that game. Yeah, definitely. Way too much time. I mean, you, you've, you've finished it, what, six or seven times? Uh, I think I am... I started my seventh time like a couple of months ago and then just I've been too busy. Okay. But yeah. Then if we... Calculate. I'm, I'm finishing my third one. I'm about 80 hours deep. Yeah. Then we're close to a thousand hours between us. <laughs> Man, that's a lot of time. Yep. <laughs> a lot of wasted time. <laughs> nah, it's it's fun. Do you have a favorite like plugin? Like we we were talking about for like you guys. I guess it would be an app sim or something. Or no, Repitch. That's my favorite. Repitch. Yeah. Yeah. It's so handy. Yeah. And it doesn't sound like shit. And yeah, that's a repitch written R E A pitch because yeah, that, it's that's the stock me. reverb pro plugin pitch changer. Yeah, that, that that's got me a, a couple of times when you leave to make dinner with your wife. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> and no, I oh yeah, so you write re just R E and then yeah, start that, turning pitch. R E P and then just why is nothing showing up? <laughs> Rare pitch. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, but second to repeat, I'd say uh, Archetype Gojira. It, Gojira? Yeah. yeah. For for me, it's the it's the best sounding one so far. I go between Gojira and Nameless. Yeah. Kind of. I, I there's Nameless doesn't have as many options, but it just always sounds good. Yeah. Fortin knows how to make apps. Yeah. And true. they really got the transition into a plugin. Yeah. Okay, so... Your, I guess your favorite hardware would be your camper, right? Or would you my, like... My uh, $2,000 guitar tuner, you mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, we don't really use no, I like, use almost it, at all. I use it lots every yeah, time yeah, I you, practice. A we used to live. have it like that way that you would like bring your camper every time and we would set it up with the interface and Jeez, everything. Jeez, that, that was a hassle. That was a lot of hassle. <laughs> and when we figured out the signal chain to catch both DIs and wet signals. Yeah. <laughs> So then uh, we just switched to using the, the the DI box here, the radial J48, and it drives right into uh, the interface. And not sponsored, by the way. No, not sponsored, <laughs> but definitely if you if you want a good DI box, I recommend it. All right. So no, but my but yeah, uh, what, yeah. Would, what would what would be your favorite guitar that you've ever owned? Then or would you say that's the KM7 or yeah, it, it's got the best neck. I really love the semi baritone scale length of it. It's just fast. It, it it's just great. The neck heel with like ultra access to all frets. I can play the 24th fret on the seventh string without touching the body. You cannot do it with the Ibanez on this one. <laughs> <laughs> He's making fun of your guitar. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I'm not making fun of it. I'm just pointing out facts. Okay, uh, we we didn't talk about this with your interview, but like, so you guys have go to picks because I always find oh, yeah, green yeah, picks yeah. all over the place. Yeah, the green picks. So, yeah. what are the green picks? Can they you are that? Dunlop Flex 0.88. Tortex Flow. Oh, Flow. Yeah, I'm just going to put this up to the camera here. It's with the turtle on it. Yeah, because it's a Tortex. But yeah. that's not my favorite pick. It's not your favorite pick? No. My favorite pick yeah. is this one. Uh, yeah, I've, I've seen these two all yeah, over my floor. <laughs> no, it's the Javier Ray's signature pick. Oh. Yeah, it's like yeah. this on the back. And this on the front. Or we can just find a picture of it online. <laughs> no, this makes me makes it less work for me. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's nice. When I played bass, I always liked like really really thick. Picks. But it's the same thickness with this one, this one, right? No, it's 0 0.73. 0 0.73 oh, millimeters. Yeah. But when I used to play bass, I always liked like thick picks. And when because I you have thicker strings, you know. Makes yeah, sense. but then 
yeah, on guitar at the same time, I use like jazz three picks. Then I grew out of that. Use, and I don't know why. I just started using thinner picks, and it just feels right for me. I, actually, I want to talk about with you two guys, like your your picking technique. Like the first time you were learning, did you learn just the standard picking technique? Because well, I, I've seen videos of like Misha describing how he picks and everything. Yeah, yeah, like take us, take take me like through like. Let's just start with you. You know, if you ex describe like how has your picking technique evolved, if it has at all. <clears throat> first time I picked up a pick, that was like this. Yeah. I still pick like this from time to time, okay. but most of the time I try to do it like this. Okay. Yeah, but some of the time you're even just using your middle finger and yeah. thumb. Uh, first time I played, I don't know if people can see it, I started like Chloe with three fingers on the pick, but I couldn't really pick very well. And then I met a guy named Tiago Trinzi, mm. a fantastic guitar player from Brazil. Okay. He was my teacher for a time and he told me, stop, that. just stop it. <laughs> Get some help. <laughs> uh, he, he taught me to. He just wasn't talking about your depression, right? No, oh, he no. was talking about your picking. Just, no, just how I hold yeah, the pick. Because get some help could be taken different ways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, since then, I've used like just two fingers. But you've probably noticed in all the Folly Thursdays, my hands usually curled up when yeah. I'm picking. I don't know when I started doing that because when I was younger, I had my fingers extended. But it, probably it be it's probably because of the way faster picking I'm doing now and more technical. Yeah. It's like more compact weight. Do you ever get around. like cramps in your hand when you are like picking? Yeah, like no. also, especially when you like you have your hands like curled up. Not not when playing guitar. No, so you're not you're not like doing putting like real a lot of effort into it. Like oh no, we we don't really hold the pick that hard. No, I, I'm not a guitarist, so I know. Yeah, we, we know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure. It would be kind of weird if you guys didn't know that I'm not a guitarist. I mean, sure. Sometimes at work when I have to hold something like really tiny and do something, yeah, my hands tend to cramp up. But so neither but, of you have tried doing it, like like Misha explained and stuff like that. I, I have tried picking like Ola Anklund and Misha, but mm. it just feels so wrong because they flip the pick the other way. So there's nothing about the sound that comes from that, that like. You, oh no, there like, there are certain aspects of the sound, but it's negligent for me. All right, so uh, I guess you would have we have the same favorite strings as he, like Diadario. Yeah, Diadario Nixel. The Nixels. The NYXL. Yeah. Okay, so let's go into <clears throat> your favorite experience as a musician. <sighs> It's probably going to be the Russia tour, right? Yeah, that, that would have to be uh, gig number four in Chelyabinsk. Whew. So that like, was a good gig. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, th that's, I, that's I, the, I, I, I heard, I, I actually heard gate number four. Like, was that like... Gig uh, number yeah, four. Yeah, I heard like gate <laughs> number four. Like, where you were like, at the airport, like, what's so special about gate number four? Oh, no, no, we were at like gate 20-something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what was special about that gig? Uh, was it the same gig you said? Or... Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, it's the one with the biggest stage. And like before, like I think it was, was it before or after the sound check when we asked Stan where we could buy some vape juice? Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. was the yeah. tour manager, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he told us we had to go across, like just across the street. He'd go with us because it's Russia. Don't fuck around in Russia. Yeah. <laughs> and but you did. Yeah, with I, the Russian I chick. fucked in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> But in yeah, on, on the way to the vape store, some two guys just came up to us like, "Hey, are you guys in Walba City Burns?" And we we didn't even know what to say because <laughs> usually in Iceland, it's like, "Hey, aren't you in that band?" Yeah, oh, cool. But they knew the name and everything. Yeah, like they were excited. Like, are you those guys? And we're like, yeah. That, that's a cool and experience. That, uh, yeah. Can can we take a picture with you? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, come here. And then they robbed you. <laughs> <laughs> no, then they came to the show later. <laughs> okay. I lost my vape. <laughs> and that was one of the few nights, uh, just, uh, just one of the few moments in my life where I was sounded, uh, surrounded by women all taking interest in what I was saying. <laughs> I was kind of scared. <laughs> <laughs> You're not used to that. No. <laughs> Which one of y'all is coming with me tonight? <laughs> <laughs> you were both single at that time. Time, right? Oh, no, he, no, no, you, you, you were all standing then, yeah, yeah. How was it like? like how long was the trip again? It was two weeks, uh, two and a half weeks, I think. No, it was no, it was 14, yeah, 14 days oh, okay, or 15 okay. days. Was it difficult not to have sex for that long time? It was just difficult not being with my girlfriend. Mm. 
I didn't find any inconvenience whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, just like why you shouldn't fear death. Yeah. <laughs> also, I'll just jerk off in the shower, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Like, what was that? Were, were you like, you were not, not in any hotel room? Hotels? Yeah, one time. Yeah. You were in a hotel room? No, twice. Twice. Mm. One one hotel with a shared, no, three, three hotels. Yeah. But did you have like... Three, uh, two of them with a shared room and one night we got individual rooms. So did you, when you needed to shower, did you just go like to pools and stuff or... No, there, there was uh, like a shared shower in the motels we were in. Yeah, oh, we okay. were pretty much showering every day. Sitting in a van for six hours yeah. tends to... Makes you sweaty. True. Doesn't tend to smell that And nice. also like a gig, you get even more sweaty. Oh, yeah. And then if you don't shower and you get in the car, like, oof. That's that also smell. when I had the problems with the second asshole. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, do we want to go into that? No, nah. I don't think we do. <laughs> Not on this episode. No. <laughs> yeah. The second asshole. Which band made is that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that 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 was the for me the best night. That no. was the best night. Yeah, because I had sex that night. <laughs> yes. I was kind of hoping for the first time in a long time. <laughs> I was kind of hoping your favorite moment would be bring it. <laughs> maybe that's your favorite memory. I don't remember much of it because we were so drunk. Yeah, we were really <laughs> drunk. If you guys like have a spare, what was it like? I think we got it down to an hour. Yeah. The the, the, the documentary. Hour. If you have a spare hour, you have nothing to do. Go check out Prone to Self Destruction. Yeah, and that's a really abridged cut because you had one twelve hour cut. Oh yeah, no, no. Uh, Prone to Intoxication yeah. was the name of making of Prone to Self Destruction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's on YouTube. We you maybe throw a out. link in the description on YouTube or something. Yeah, we could do that because then you can see, uh, yeah, basically us uh, <laughs> being really drunk in Italy. Uh, recording an album but not really much focus on the recording of the album <laughs> no and also you don't really see a lot of me because i'm usually behind the camera yeah <laughs> do show up from time to time yeah we yeah from time to time definitely uh, i i was in what second place in a rap competition <laughs> yeah <laughs> too bad that's in icelandic and people won't yeah, understand it didn't i put like i think i put subtitles on it i think i did yeah you did yeah <laughs> I don't yeah, know. I haven't watched it. In a I guess long we time. would move then to the worst experience you've had as a musician. Uh, uh, there hasn't really nothing. Yeah, that was a weird way to try to put something. There hasn't really been anything like majorly negative. So you would say like music has? It's been over overwhelmingly positive. Oh, that's great. That's good. But uh. Okay, let's jump into uh, Dream Gear. So I'm going to put it this way. So your metal god, Keith Marrow, yeah. says you can pick any gear you want, you know, guitars, uh, amps, whatever. You can just pick whatever you want. Does it have to be What are you getting? Does it have to be pre-existing or can it be a custom job? That's a good question. Should we allow him to uh, have custom? Yeah, let's allow customs. Okay. I'd make a variation of the Mark II KM7, which would be just uh, black stained swamp ash with Neck through. None Did you say uh, swamp ass? Swamp ash. <laughs> I was like swamp ass. <laughs> Shrek's booty. <laughs> Same body wood as in the Ibanese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you've seen the back of the KM7. Like yeah. how grainy it is. Mm. I want that on the front. Oh, okay. And like, yeah, for a seven string. 26. Have you considered just turning it around? <laughs> <laughs> you know your snare sounds different if you flip that upside down. <laughs> yeah, you're hitting the actual <laughs> snares. Yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty much that. Like... Yeah, pretty much just another look. Maybe have it 27 inches for a 7-string and 28 for 8-string. I'm very simplistic. And also, the KM7 has my preferred like control layout, the volume and toggle switch just way the fuck out of the way. Mm. Nothing to hit when you're like strumming and playing and stuff. But any other like musical gear like related to maybe guitar that you want? Yeah. I know you like Randall Satan. Yeah, but I don't really like using... Actual amps. Yeah. But wouldn't you want to own one just in case? Oh, yeah. Want? If I could pick... It's your dream gear. You can pick anything you want. Like just then, I'd probably just get the Quad Cortex because then we'll be set for live. Yeah, then it's easier for me to use at home sure. for practice. Uh, but you don't have a large apartment. Oh no. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, I'd love a, a Randall Satan. It's one of the few two amps I've actually tried with a Prestige eight string Ibanez. Oh, nice. <laughs> with DiMaggio's. That must have sounded nice, right? Oh yeah, it was fun. <laughs> but yeah, I'd like. Uh, Randall Satan in a 4x12 and a PV5150 block letter. So like in because the future... That's the amp that 
like all my Kemper tones are about. That's what Keith Merrow bases everything about. Just most metal tones today are based from the PV5150. Yeah. It's uh, sy synonymous with metal yeah. today. Like we want that that modern metal tone. Yeah, you need an amp from the 90s. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, they just, they got it so right. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, if that's what you want, go for it. It's like, I didn't much care about Van Halen mm. before he died. I still don't care much about Van Halen after he died, but I do recognize his contribution with the with the 5150. Yeah. The greatest amp ever made. Yes. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much it for our questions. Is there something, before we go into something different, is there something you would want to talk about? Hmm. Something you want to get across, like something about your experience as a musician or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Don't expect to get paid. Yeah, Moving on. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to jump into... You have a fart of the week for us, right? Yes, sir. You want to show us? This is this is by Gas Master. Let's put it here to the mic. You better believe that's real. So that's the guy on TikTok, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, Gas Master. Yep. So that's what he's called. So, like, check that guy out. He has some of the best farts you've ever heard. Mm hmm And then we go into part of the week. And, yeah, who had the part of the week? Uh, I had it. Okay. I, I forget the name of the song, but it's from Elysium. Yeah, but if, uh, if, uh, if we have a hard time finding the part or something, I'll just cut and... Uh, Put, like just cut out the silences and looking for it. Okay, it's near <coughs> the end. Is it the newest one? Uh, no, the second newest one. It's, the, newest it's one. the one with the guitar yeah, playthrough. Yeah, the Wretched of the Earth. No, it's the one with the guitar playthrough. I oh. don't. Yeah, that's the same song. Yeah, it's the Wretched of the Earth. Yeah, the same song. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just uh, jump to the second, uh, the last third of the song. The yeah. last third of the song. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, to this here. Last third, like here, maybe? Probably, I don't know. Yeah, let's go for like 220. That's Should have probably number. prepared that. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But yeah, these guys are fucking awesome. Yep, stanky. Uh, like, I, I also, love they're just great guys. They were with us on the Thaw Thursday anniversary episode. Yeah, both Oliver and Kofi. Yeah. Or however you say that name. And that guy who sat in the background staring yeah, at the Yeah, that bass player. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the guy who's probably the only guy that I don't know the name of. Do you guys? Elliot. Know? Elliot. Ah. Sorry, Elliot. If hey, I Elliot. Your name. But yeah, I, I really love how they like contrast from fucking, fucking low. And with those like just tiny little high-pitched noises which come in it's just uh, it's so beautiful okay so uh but you're gonna have that was part of the week yeah but because you are the man of the hour yes uh you're gonna have to give us a recommendation for people to listen to like for the next i guess two weeks before we come back hmm. recommendation i guess like let's see wouldn't what? you go for like brand of sacrifice let's just see what i've been listening to Probably Band of Sacrifice, right? I've been listening to The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, <laughs> The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, Heart of Stone, and The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, Blood and Wine. What's your favorite <laughs> song off of Witcher? I'd probably say Go Back to Whence You Came. Oh. I'm not sure. Do you, do you know where which part of the game that plays in? It's in Heart of Stone. It's in Heart of Stone, okay. It's this one. Ah, okay. I, I, I would have to say... <clears throat> wait, wait, let, let the melody kick in. 
it's so eerie and yeah, it's so it's so hauntingly beautiful. Yeah, I, I actually in the main game I would have to say Fields of Art Skellig. But for people that have no interest in gaming, like oh yeah, I, I also like I don't know the name of it, but like the main song that pops up when you're in Velen, like the the gloomy one when you're just wandering uh, about Velen. I yeah. I love that. I, I like you really are running home with that whole I'm. I have depression, and I'm going to have gloomy and depressing and creepy. I don't know if you've noticed, but all the songs I've written are <laughs> melancholy as fuck. Yeah, but I, I actually like that, so... Yeah, for for example, the the last like full-length song, was the, the second newest, uh, Thorley Thursday, I wrote that. And the first one after our month break, I also wrote that. Yeah. They're both depressing songs. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And, you know, also, I can't really judge you because all of my lyrics are... are most, most of my lyrics are... Pretty damn depressing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so do you have a recommendation? Mm-hmm. Like, people know Brand of Sacrifice. Okay, <laughs> so you want to go for something that people maybe don't know? Maybe. Oh, yeah? Or you might have coke. Yeah. Chloe just asked me for some cock. <laughs> <laughs> I do want the cock. Yeah. A cock with a comma on top. I mean... Hello, my friend. Yeah, listen to Dal Av, Suicide Dal-Av. Forest, the album. It's Should we uh, just go for Berserker or what no, should no, we go no, for? No, 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 no. I have a favorite song. It's Veiled. Veiled? Yeah. Veil it. Because I love, the, I love the transition to like the chorus part of the song. Do you song. remember like how far into the song it would be? Uh, let me just check on my phone real quick. Or we just maybe... Maybe we just scan through it. It's not that late. Not that late, okay. Man, your internet is fantastic. Yeah, here. Hey, Logan. Love that. I mean, for anyone watching this, if you're watching this podcast, you probably know Logan already. But yeah, yeah. Logan is an MVP. Yeah. And uh, he, he has this project, Dalaf, and yeah. Check his shit out. Some of the folliest thing you'll find. Yeah, ex- a- apart from like the hummus. originators of it. Hummus. Yeah, well, I was thinking we'll tell more, but... Hummus. Hummus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's hummus. what I call humanity's left. Yeah, humanity's last breath, because that's a long name. Yeah, and also, like, he, he struggled saying humanity's last breath. That's why he says hummus instead. Yeah, hummus. I just say humlap. Humlap. <laughs> oh, did I forget to turn it to desktop while uh, we were doing it? Well, this is, yeah, this is the band name Dal Av. Yeah, that's how you write it. Yeah, or, or Dal Audiovisual. <laughs> I, I used to call him, like, just Dal A.V. Yeah, yeah, I don't even know. I, I haven't really heard him say it Logan, himself. Logan, so. send us a video telling us how to say the name of the band. Yeah. Dogs are living angry rastly. <laughs> That's Tala for you. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, we are uh, just past an hour actually right now. So uh, I guess we could just call it a day unless somebody has something they want to say. Dogs are living angry rastly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you, for the, thank you for the chat, guys. And, uh, and that's Thal, folks. That's Thal, folks. I Remember, guess dogs are living. I guess we'll see you in two weeks. Uh, yeah. For my uh, introduction and discussion. Yeah, we're probably going to botch your introduction, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not expecting great things, <laughs> since I won't be in control of... Yeah, just don't. Oh, yeah, and I'm going to have to teach you how to do all this, which is not difficult, because I've set it up for you guys. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. Bliss. <laughs>